The funeral will be Saturday in Mississippi. We want to take you live. This just in, you're looking at a car chase underway right now in the Houston area. Of course, that white van that the camera's focusing on, that is a Dodge Caravan, Highway 59. It's going north. This is Sugarland, Texas, in Fort Bend County. We're still getting more information on this. Again, a high speed, very high speed car chase underway. That white caravan is the focus. You see the helicopters chasing that caravan. And you may know we covered another car chase in the Dallas area that ended in a crash with a pickup truck. So, of course, it can be very dangerous, the outcome on these. But it seems as though the cops, if you look right there, is that a police officer? I believe that it is following very fast as well, right on the tail of that white caravan. And again, KHOU is bringing us live pictures of that Houston car chase underway. In the Stafford area, I'm still getting information in on this. It's in the Stafford area in Houston, if you're familiar with that area. That white van Dodge Caravan, that's Highway 59. It's going north at speeds very, very fast. You see how many cars it's passing. In Sugarland, Texas, Fort Bend County, is that correct? I believe that it is. We don't have information on why. Of course, we never do until the chase ends. Why someone would try to outrun the police, but you see it over and over again. Recently, we covered one in Dallas. We cover a lot of car chases in Los Angeles. Say that again, I'm sorry. All right, I'm hearing that he has made, because we are just tuning into this, several U-turns, illegal U-turns on the highway, made several turns, doing dangerous things on the highway right now, putting many of the drivers in danger. In the Dallas area, a car was hit, a pickup truck, last week when we covered that car chase, and the driver of that pickup truck angry that the police didn't do something sooner. You see the van right now slowing down a bit because he has to, he or she has to, following those cars, but police are right on his or her tail, and of course, the news crew is always following the car chase, so it's hard really for that person to go anywhere, but it continues time and time again, and we cover it, KHOU, a car chase underway, heading northbound right now on the Beltway, if you're familiar with that area, the Houston area, Highway 59 going north. And the media is urging people, if you're listening to this, to stay away, of course. Stay away, steer clear if you can help it. A lot of the people in front and on the side of that driver really don't know what's going on. Um, but if you can, the media is saying, please stay away from that area. And it looks like, it's hard to tell because we're really on the tail of that white caravan, but it looks like there is definitely one police officer on the tail of that car. Usually, as backup comes in, it turns into several police officers following it. But the suspect, there he or she is. It started where I'm getting more information um, as this goes on, but we're hearing that it started about 20 minutes ago. So these car chases, as you know, can go on for several hours, really, until either the person runs out of gas, does something uh, very dangerous, causes some sort of crash. Sometimes the driver even pulls off into a residential area, um, causing even more danger to residents there. Some people even have been seen leaving their houses trying to stop this. But again, the media is saying, don't do anything. If you're not the police, even stay off the roadways if you can, if you're watching this. Um, if you're just joining us, live pictures, this is a car chase in the Houston, Texas area, a white van, there it is, Dodge Caravan, Highway 59, going northbound. The information we have is that it started about 25 minutes ago. The driver of that, driving erratically, very quickly, and it seems to have made a couple of illegal U-turns before this, before the live pictures, before we tuned in. Um, illegal maneuvers, it's unclear, usually in these situations, uh, the police pulls the driver over or attempts to pull the driver over for usually a routine traffic stop, anything from avoiding a stop sign, a red light, uh, so forth, and the person doesn't pull over. Therefore, the chase ensues. It is continuing. We've been covering it for a little over five minutes. It's been going on for more than 20, and we just got these live pictures on, uh, and we're bringing them to you, KHOU. Say that again. And we understand he's near a tollway, which, of course, could caused the driver to slow down a bit. Just about five minutes ago, he, was be, he or she 
was behind a group of cars and it slowed them down um, a bit. And time and time again, we've spoken to Mike Brooks on this um, over and over again about why this happens, about why the driver of these cars don't stop. And it's unclear. There's various reasons, but they all think they can get away and they rarely do. They really never do because of the media coverage and the police on the tail of that. It doesn't seem like the person will get away. There's really a couple options for that person. They run out of gas. They cause a crash. That is something that the police, of course, don't want to happen. Um, but they just kind of ride it out. Police, we can't see it in the shot here, but police officers in Houston are on the tail of that driver. They're just staying a safe distance back. And if you're just tuning in, he's heading north, that driver, you're looking at a high-speed chase underway, heading north on the Beltway, Highway 59, if you're familiar with that area, that is northbound. This is Sugarland, Texas. In that area, I believe it's still Fort Bend County. Live pictures, a car chase underway. Just, a, I believe it was last week, maybe the week before, we covered a car chase in Dallas, a high-speed chase that lasted a very long time that ended with the driver in critical condition the driver in that chase hit a pickup truck and was severely injured so not only is this driver putting himself at risk he's also putting other drivers at risk a pickup truck smashed into that car the car smashed into the pickup truck in dallas and uh, there were injuries so this could end that way as well that is not what the police want so they stay a safe distance behind the car and hope that this guy, male or female, decides, look, I'm not getting away here. I might as well pull over. But that's not usually what occurs. So officers hope that that occurs or that the person runs out of gas. We've seen a, a tire popped in the past out of Los Angeles. A lot of car chases there as well. As I mentioned, the one in Dallas and this one in Houston, Texas. If you're just tuning in live pictures, car chase underway. That is a white Dodge Caravan. It's on Highway 59 going north. And apparently that car took uh, several illegal U-turns. And it just passed the I-10. If you're familiar with that area, the reason why we're giving you specifics here, you may not live in that area, but if you do, the media is saying, please do anything but go on that roadway. Don't try to help the police out in any way. We've seen that happen before in residential areas. Just stay away, stay off the roadway. That's the best thing. The safest thing for you to do is to keep um, your distance. So we're hearing, as we cover this, we've covered it about close to about 10 minutes here. It's going uh, in West Houston, I believe it is now. And we are joined now by an expert in this field, Mike Brooks, <laughs> thanks thanks for coming on sh such short notice. No, no problem at all. We see this time and time again. Why is my first question, which I'd like to ask the driver. It happens all the time. The, there are helicopters around, officers. Why do you think it still occurs? It does. You know, we don't know exactly what started the chase. We don't know if there was a, a crime in progress and the police came upon it, or if it was a traffic stop and uh, the person might be wanted. But usually... The reason they run is because they're usually wanted for something or they've done something uh, you know, <laughs> that they shouldn't have been doing. But people think they can outrun the police. You can't outrun the eye in the sky. I'm sorry. And, you know, and many times we see, we see these chases. And you know, a lot of people think, you know, oh, it's, uh, it's all fun and games. It's not fun and games. So far this year in the United States, there have been two law enforcement officers killed during vehicle pursuits. Last year, we had two officers for the entire year who were killed during vehicle pursuits. So it's, it's very, very dangerous. Uh, you know, especially when you get onto off the uh, interstates, uh, get onto surface streets. It's hard to see. It's hard to say how far because they, they pull a shot back. We don't see. We think they're listening to you. They're pulling it back. You know, it's uh, it's it's really tough because and, and we, you, we also have to be careful what we say because, you know, with uh, satellite radio, uh, you know, especially after they get stopped and sometimes people uh, decide they're not going to get out. We know we don't want to give away uh, what law enforcement's doing. But this guy uh, or woman, and we've seen a woman just mm -hmm. recently in a chase, uh, seems like they're going at least at least 80 possibly I, when I first was sitting down uh, it looks like possibly 100 miles an hour what is the protocol in terms of what police officers should do can they lay out what is called I believe is it called a spike strip yeah spike strips that is one option there's another option that we've talked about in the past where a law enforcement officer will come up and uh, try to get one of the either side quarter panels and do what they call a pit maneuver. Uh, we've seen that on a number, of, uh, a number of chases. But this person, oh, it's a very, very close call there. At, uh, 
just weaving in and out of traffic. Uh, you don't see any law enforcement right on their uh, right on their tail. But I, I can tell you, Susan, in the uh, Houston area, there is a, a, a great mutual aid agreement between law enforcement agencies. So usually what happens in this is the lead agency who started the, the chase will go ahead and, and, and keep on the chase. Uh, Texas Department of, High, of uh, Public Safety, uh, like their highway patrol, will usually get involved, especially when it's on the interstate. And as they go through jurisdictions, uh, the supervisor in that particular jurisdiction will basically call the ball and uh, will, will say what they, what they should do and what they shouldn't and do. Mike, it seems you were right. I'm reading that, that that is a suspect in that van in a robbery, a suspect in a robbery. So as you said, they're wanted for something. They may be pulled over for a routine traffic stop. They don't stop. Therefore, the chase right. ensues and it's usually a suspect but think about all the charges this guy or oh, yeah. female is racking up as they as they keep going Just and they're blown through several toll, toll booths we understand oh, yeah. a lot of laws breaking here oh yeah and, and definitely felony felony eluding in most uh, most jurisdictions there is a charge like that you know besides the uh, this the robbery which is also a felony and uh, and, and numerous numerous tracks traffic charges now looks like onto another road and he's picking up and he or she is picking up speed again Susan mm -hmm. and again very very dangerous and you know it's because not only to the police that they're chasing this person but to the citizens at whole that are driving along this road and you are right on target if, if anybody's out there and they're listening uh, on their satellite radio to uh, to HLN which I'm sure a lot of people are and you are in this area the best thing to do is just stay away from from this particular area because you don't want you don't want to get involved in this that's for sure all right an update for folks just joining us this is in the Houston area on the Beltway 8th uh, going north and we understand the driver of that white van is a suspect in a robbery, therefore going at high speeds, trying to avoid the police. And it's, he seems to be pulling off on the side there. But the speeds continue, Mike. You know we covered a car chase in Dallas a short time ago, yeah. and I was saying the driver of that, critical condition. So right. he's not only putting himself in danger, the other people on the roadway in danger. And, of course, we've seen drivers pull off into a residential area right. is what we don't want but would that be a way that police would be able to stop him if he was in the residence yeah because right now he's going he or she's going too um, much too fast to uh to throw down some spike strips and in fact you know you the pursuing uh the pursuing officer you you, you don't see him that right. close behind either so uh, most of the time, if there is a robbery involved, they will go ahead and chase. I know in California, the highway patrol there, they basically told me, if we chase you, we'll follow you till the wheels fall off. Different jurisdictions have different chase policies. Um, I know in Washington, D.C., when I was there, we uh, basically we had, a, we had a we will chase you anywhere policy until a pedestrian was, uh, was seriously injured after, after a bank robbery in Arlington that went Arlington and came into the district, and the, ch and the chase policy was changed then. It has to be approved by a supervisor. Now, most jurisdictions where there is a robbery involved, where they believe that there uh, is a weapon involved, they will continue the chase and they will not break the chase off, uh, which I most likely in this case. Now, you see the car is getting into some more traffic, kind of slowing down a little bit, and uh, which makes it even more dangerous. And you mentioned in L.A. they said they chased the car so the wheels fall off. Yeah, we've seen that. CHP. We, we have, have seen that. We, we have seen that. And uh, we've seen uh, wheels fall off uh, as a result of spike strips. We've seen, uh, you know, uh, just hitting curbs, anything else. But it's, it's hard to say, uh, you know, what this person, if this person's armed. But you always have to go under the assumption, especially after a robbery, Susan, that this person is considered armed and extremely dangerous. And, you know, the, the, the car itself, the car itself in a chase like this can be considered a weapon also. And so it's, it's very, very difficult. Uh, truckers, sometimes you hear them get involved. They will, they will sometimes, if they see inside, they'll be listening to... Uh, to the uh, local law enforcement agency, and they can contact them through uh, assistance band radios. But again, it's a great core. It's coordination between ground units and the uh, helicopter and the, and the air units, the aviation units, coordinating the chase, looking ahead, trying to see what traffic patterns are. All these things are taken into consideration during a chase like this. And I say male or female because, as you said, we have seen a female behind the wheel. Usually, it's a male, but it, it looks as though that person is driving close to 100 miles per hour. Yeah. Speculating here, but as you see, all of the cars flying right by all of them and if you're just joining us again this is the houston area police in hot pursuit not too close though too close proximity of that white van that southwest houston on beltway 8th i believe in the houston area live aerial shots of that car and you gotta wonder mike what is this person thinking that's always what i think why don't they just pull over they will be caught in the long run but logically 
They're not thinking. No, they're not. And uh, you, you, and you never know if uh, if this person has an altered mental status, what we like to say, a uh, polite way of saying, you know, have some issues. Uh, altered mental status as, as the person on narcotics, we don't know. Uh, but it seems that people think that they can outrun the police when ultimately they, they don't. And, and a lot of times people will criticize the police. Like the, in Dallas just recently, when that chase, uh, the man who was hit when they went through the intersection, he was criticizing police for even for continuing to chase. But when you have someone who was considered armed and extremely dangerous that was that um, is, is being chased because he's a suspect in a robbery you know you you have to go ahead and try to get this person locked up because it could, they can be a danger to themselves and to the community if, if they're not if they're not brought to justice and um, we have new information here they're going northwest is it Harris County I believe That's it looks like they're taking a u-turn there right there Whoop. you turn right on the interstate going into opposing traffic now Susan I mean, and you know, this is Harris County. Harris County takes in uh, the, the greater Houston area. Now this person is going, oh, oh, almost an accident there. Now, you, okay, there's a there's a unit right behind him. That unit you see the uh, looks like Houston PD with the uh, with the white car with the blue stripe. They're all, they're now on him. Looks like on a surface street now. Now you know, so there's a, there's a possibility that units. If they can coordinate, and they, if, if this person stays on this street, Susan, that they could, maybe you can lay down some spike strips. But again, we saw in that chase just last week, very, very dangerous because that, uh, that uh, officer almost got hit when laying down, down spike strips. But this person, again, at a high rate of speed, off the interstate, onto uh, a frontage road, if you will. But uh, still, we want to remind our, our viewers also, this, uh, this person in this car is a suspect in a robbery. And that's what apparently initiated the chase to begin with. Still heading the same direction on an access road and just flying, Mike, right through there. Yeah, you saw that car coming up to him. It uh, looks like a, a, a small SUV, law enforcement SUV, that, that black, dark SUV. You can see, uh, you can see strobes Ooh. in the back, trying to Coming go over. Right yep, trying to go over. This could be, well, going through the intersection. Now you got the the uniformed. Okay, you see the car right there on the right hand side, that dark vehicle. Trying to keep up, uh, trying to keep up with him. Looked like I could see strobes in the in the rear of that uh, rear of that vehicle. And I can imagine officers getting more and more angry at this guy or girl, saying, "What is this person uh, doing, putting so many people at danger?" But they have to keep their cool and have a protocol on what they can do. Absolutely, totally, total professionals. Uh, you know, you you train for this. You hope you never have to use it. You know, I, I was in a number of chase, chases myself, uh, some with gunfire, some without. And you know, you try to keep your adrenaline under control. It's difficult because you're you're behind you're behind the person, the lead car, who's got the who's got the eyeball on the uh, suspect vehicle, is giving out is giving location they should go so you're you're driving uh, you're talking on the radio you're coordinating with the aviation units uh, trying to put together a plan uh, if possible as the chase goes on and the chase we were talking about happened on June 29th in Dallas as right. you mentioned that ended when the driver of the car that was eluding police blew through a red light hit a pickup truck the driver of the car in critical condition so this guy or girl has had pretty uh, couple close calls here, so th yeah. that could happen as well. Endangering, endangering himself. That doesn't seem to be a care um, going through the driver's mind right exactly. now. We do know. Welcome back. Our top story. We continue to cover a high-speed car chase. It's going on right now in the Houston area. That white van, a Dodge Caravan. It started on Highway 59. It is now whizzing in and out of traffic on side streets. This has been going on for at least. 40 minutes, 40 to 50 minutes. Again, we're joined by Steve Cardi, and if I'm saying that right, a former motorcycle police officer. Steve, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Have you been watching? What's your take on this so far after about 50 minutes? Well, it's not an extremely high rate pursuit. It looks like but... they're, they're the cops. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Yep. On ahead. foot, you saw a police officer with his guns drawn. Right, right. Well, it looks like they're trying to, to take, out the, uh, take out the car with the strips, but he's uh, ultimately avoided that. Uh, they're, they're now again back in pursuit. He is, uh, he is driving that car very recklessly. Someone uh, very well could get hurt in this pursuit. Absolutely. Steve, thanks for your uh, expertise here. He's making several U-turns. Doesn't seem to have a plan. He just wants to get away. We don't know why they've been chasing him for the better part of an hour from Southwest Houston up the 59 freeway, finally up the Belt 8, it's called, onto the northwest part of Houston. Not really all that far uh, from George Bush International Airport. There's the spike strips. They've been looking to deploy, and uh, probably this will disable this vehicle, if not immediately, shortly thereafter. He'll be driving on rims uh, if those, in fact, took full effect. 
Uh, it's all, all the concentration now is in this one area of surface streets around the northwest part of Houston. Uh, after several miles and perhaps an hour chasing him along the freeway system, he's making several U-turns right now, driving, as uh, Steve said, just erratically. Uh, no intention, no word on why he's being chased. He's back, he it looks like he's back in the same area he's been over two or three times. And we, you get the impression this is going to end pretty soon. I don't know why. And he is a suspect in a car robbery. Oh, that's he is. What we do know, right? That's a new car infirmary. robbery. Exactly. So uh, this is a stolen car or a we robbery. We don't know if the car that he's in is stolen. It's okay. unclear. What we're, what we do know is he's a suspect in some sort of robbery, a car robbery. So. Um, this guy or girl obviously doesn't want to get caught making several erratic moves, several close calls. I'm surprised that uh, nothing's happened so far. He's made several U-turns. and um, Yeah, and if, if I might add, uh, a robbery is generally done by force and possibly with a weapon. So he could be a rather dangerous individual. And uh, I was talking to Mike Brooks, Steve. I don't know if you were listening to that, but there's different uh, protocol depending on what state you're in. And he told me that Los Angeles police say, we'll chase the person until the wheels fall off and yeah. we have covered a lot of chases in Los Angeles what was the protocol for where you were yeah in, in New York here uh, it, it would have to be a serious crime for us to continue a rather lengthy pursuit such as this uh, however for a crime such as robbery uh, we would we would engage in a pursuit as, as as the officers are here well he's been piling out a lot of charges he's been passing on the shoulder he almost struck a motorcyclist he's gone through a couple of toll plazas and he's put a lot of lives at risk so there he goes. He's up on his shoulder. And, it's stra is it and strange? he's avoiding spike strips, obviously. I'm not sure whether the one they deployed earlier took. Now he's uh, through another intersection. S Steve, is it strange for you to see? We just saw an officer on foot with his uh, it, gun it, drawn. It's a rather dangerous maneuver, uh, but this is the way that they're handling it, and hopefully it'll be uh, uneventful with regard to injury to, to life or property. He also turned around and headed down the wrong way on an exit ramp on a busy freeway in the middle of the day on a, uh, on, a, on, a, on a work day in Houston. You can imagine uh, how, what, how many narrow escapes that might have caused. Uh, here he is. At, uh, I wish we had a better clue as to exactly where he is, but uh, he is not far from the Bush International Airport on a series of surface streets being pursued by police. Started out in uh, the Sugar Land area of southwest, uh, uh, actually Fort Bend County, uh, and then moved into Harris County as he hit the freeway systems. This has been going on for almost exactly one hour, almost exactly an hour from now ago uh, in the Sugar Land area. Again, he's on a series of uh, surface streets, making several U-turns, driving quite erratically. <gasps> oh! Oof. And, and we, know, we know that the longer the pursuit goes, the more likelihood of, of someone getting, injury, getting, getting injured or hurt is going to be as well. But yeah. now it looks like they're employing some, some different tactics here. You saw about seven officers in, yeah. in the shot, yeah. so uh, they're piling up. They're getting a lot of backup that they need, but of course they're, they don't want to put themselves in danger, um, which has happened before, as Mike Brooks was saying, that he knew of two, two police officers dying in, in a situation like this. So, of course, they're going to put their safety uh, as an issue as well. Absolutely. That's a 3,000-some-odd-pound weapon that he's driving right now, and that's the way the police officers are looking at it. What about the pit maneuver? Have you had any experience deploying that, Steve? Uh, we don't typically use that here in, in, in New York. It is used around the country and with some great success. Uh, it is a very dangerous move, not only for the, the, uh, the, the police officer, uh, but for the individual that they're pursuing and the other users of that highway. So it's, it's got to be calculated uh, appropriately. What's the protocol under which you, you continue a chase or you break it off? What's the, here we well, go, it, another, another spike strip. He's got to be disabled pretty soon. I would think one of those is taken, wouldn't you, Steve? Uh, it, doesn't to say. That, it doesn't appear that it has because you'd start to see some remnant, remnants of uh, that, that tire wearing down and or him driving on the win rim, which would generate sparks and or smoke. Yeah. Uh, again, the protocol for continuing your chase or breaking it off, what is it where you are? Yeah, in a, in a felony situation such as this, where you have an individual who's committed uh, a violent crime, and an armed robbery would be a violent crime, we would continue to pursue him, try and box him in, try and slow him down, try and take control over that vehicle. By any means necessary? Well, certainly in, in, in New York State, you're, you're not allowed to shoot at a, most, most departmental procedures are that you're not allowed to shoot at a moving vehicle. Okay.
however it is done. All right. And this is according, if you're just joining us, to the KPRC website, saying the chase started shortly after 1 p.m. Houston time in the downtown area. An officer attempted to stop this vehicle, flagged him down. The driver began to speed up and almost ran over an officer. That's what I'm reading, again, on the website KPRC. The partner had to get out of the way. At that point, that chase began. Now, you said about close to one hour this chase has been underway. About I saw at least seven officers making several attempts to stop this driver, uh, not being successful. But again, no one's been injured so far, so that's a success in itself. Yes. What? Yes. Oh, go ahead, Steve. Sorry. Yeah, it is. It is. I mean, a pursuit that's lasted this long uh, over this amount of time invol involving this amount of, uh, amount of police officers. Uh, th uh, again, the risk goes up considerably uh, with, with this length of time and, and the maneuvers that he's doing. Usually do chase suspects head to an area they're familiar with? What's, what's your experience in that? Uh, that? That depends. It depends how, how desperate they are. Uh, by him circling around, it, it, it appears that he is, is, may not be highly familiar with the area that he's in. Yeah, he went into a parking garage and emerged from the other side. That was a risk on his part. Big time. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, this is basically northeast Houston now. It started out in southwest Houston. It's gone up uh, uh, the southwest freeway into Harris County uh, and up what's called the Belt 8 freeway and now it's on surface streets and it's taken a very serpentine course as he's going into and out of uh, parking lots uh, and and businesses and here's another vantage point from uh, our Philly it looks like he's in a parking area right now uh, he is bound to get away but he's just not it's just not gonna happen these things there we go this seems to be a pretty skilled driver in the bigger picture of these car chases that we have seen avoiding police several times there have been several tries on this guy and steve isn't this person this driver uh raking up the charges here if he uh, is a yeah. suspect isn't this just increasing yeah he's going to he's going to receive multiple counts and probably multiple counts in a variety of different jurisdictions so uh they're they're gonna they're gonna throw the book at this guy does the initial jurisdiction take precedence here who who controls this situation and who's yeah, calling likely, the shots right now well, well, if they're if they're transferring from jurisdiction to jurisdiction, whoever gets him is going to to take on the initial charges, and then he'll be uh, lodged and/or charges will be fired and filed in the other jurisdictions that the pursuit went through. Okay. So these are all these are all multiple. Uh, these are going to be multiple charges uh, of reckless endangerment, uh, possibly attempted murder, if, uh, or uh, attempted murder of a police officer if he did try and run an officer down. Mm -hmm. How close behind do you stay on a freeway? Do you, do you give them a little bit wider berth on a, on a you know, going 85 miles an hour on a freeway system than you would on a surface street? Yeah, you, you want to watch for his reckless maneuvers, which may cause you, the police officer, to ultimately crash. Yeah. Is someone telling these police officers, we see one in close proximity to the driver right now, how far or, or what to do to decide to move in, move closer and try to stop this guy or stay at a safe distance? Yeah, usually the lead officer is calling out the directions, mm -hmm. and they'll be familiar with the, the territory that they're going through, and now likely they've just changed direction again, and they will be uh, advising officers to possibly cut off on, on, on additional intersections that they're approaching. And when they seize the opportunity, they, they will box him in, hopefully, and end and, and this. What about the adrenaline rush from the pursuing officer? I mean, he just might want to take the guy out. How do you control that? Well, it's, it's through your training and through your professionalism that, you know, that adrenaline dr rush kicks in, but then you kind of settle in and, okay, this is a pursuit, this is my job, this is what I have to do. So the, the adrenaline rush is good. It puts you more on high alert than it does to make you act in, in, in a rather uh, reckless fashion, if you would, for law enforcement. All right, this is, uh, it's near the Greens Point Mall, and he's gone into a parking garage, probably a five- or six-story parking garage. So we're going to lose picture here for a while, uh, but hopefully this will bring this thing to an end. Uh, there is really, if they, if they block the entrances, there's no other way out, right? Well, it's, it looks like a rather large complex, so the lead car is going to try and stay with that vehicle uh, and box him in. Um, if he gets out and gets into the population there, it may be hard to, to locate and identify him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If he gets out without them seeing it, if he's that far ahead, they may not have a, a good video a, a visual on him. They may not know what he's, how he's dressed, right? What yeah, he looks it, like. 
In all likelihood, they have a general description of him. If he, if he was the, the, the suspect in a robbery case, uh, they'll have a good description. They may even have him identified if that car is not stolen. All right, we're talking to Steve Cardi, a former motorcycle police officer uh, and criminal investigator in New York State who's uh, kind enough to help us uh, sort through what's going on today in Houston. It's a car chase. It's been going on a little over an hour now. started in the southwest part of that area, actually in another county. Uh, and then moved up a series of freeways to the northern part of Houston on a northern belt highway. Finally, over a series of, um, of, of surface streets, they, pl they tried multiple times, three or four times at least, to throw out spike strips to disable the car to no avail. It's a white Dodge minivan running from HPD. Uh, the reasons are not completely clear, but it was a vehicle robbery. Is that how you're describing it? Yes, that's what we're hearing okay. so far. And it's also very dangerous for pedestrians inside of that parking garage or people in their car if this man or woman is armed going yeah. in there. Unfortunately, we don't have a good video of what's going on, but I can tell you uh, there must be 25 police vehicles, law enforcement vehicles trailing this. So uh, chances are he's going to be captured very soon unless he has darted into an office building uh, and who knows what might happen. There's no word on whether there's no word on whether he might be armed or whether in fact it is a he driving. Steve, thank you for your expertise. We appreciate it. You're My very pleasure. kind. Good job. And um, we'll continue to follow the story and bring you the result of what happened after this hour-long police chase in Houston. Many thanks to everybody. Susan, thanks to you as well. All right, let's move on to another story we've been following, and that is the spree killing that's been going on in Gaffney, South Carolina, where police say they may have a new lead. Plus, who won tickets? 11,000 will be at the Staples Center for the actual memorial. The other 6,500 will be in the neighboring Nokia Theater watching the televised service. New details. All right, the suspect on that chase we just talked about in Houston is on the roof, and they've got him. He has now been grabbed into custody. And that is the end of an hour-long chase that began in southwest Houston. It went along the freeway system for most of that time at extreme speeds. A lot of passing on the shoulder, a lot of near misses, including one with a motorcycle. He went the wrong way down an entrance ramp on the freeway system, finally exited onto surface streets, and he was uh, chased by police who tried to throw out spike strips uh, to no avail. And then finally he darted into a parking garage where he was chased by, I would guess, two or three dozen law enforcement uh, officials and finally has been chased down onto the roof. You see the police dog right there and he has been grabbed and taken into custody. This started as a car robbery in Sugar Land, Texas and ended just a few moments ago on the roof of a parking garage in the northern part of the city, not far from the Greenpoint Mall, if you know the Houston area at all. Guys, what are we doing? Going to the break. We'll be right back. More details on the Jackson uh, service tomorrow and a lot more details on that spree of five killings in Gaffney, South Carolina. Go nowhere. We'll be right back. CNN.com. We love hearing from you. Chuck. We love hearing from you, Jerry. Thanks for your time. Appreciate it. My pleasure. All right. The chase is over in Houston. It took about an hour. It uh, went along the Internet uh, highway system and uh, finally ended up north of the city of Houston, not far from the airport, not far from a major shopping center in the parking deck of a uh, of a business complex. And that's where the uh, white minivan that was being chased by Houston police and several other law enforcement officers finally trailed him into and he was arrested. And there he is in custody uh, just outside the Houston metro area. A chase that took the better part of an hour and almost cost a lot of people some injuries. High rates of speed has finally ended. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Police say they may have a new lead in that killing spree in South Carolina. This is the scene, though, from Houston uh, a short while ago where police finally corralled a, uh, uh, a chase suspect uh, on the roof of a, uh, of a building, a, uh, a private uh, commercial building north of Houston, and he apparently jumped from one deck to the other and seriously injured himself as he was trying to elude police. Again, the uh, 
Uh, the platform below is where it all ended, and there were perhaps two dozen officers in hot pursuit of this suspect, and apparently it all started with a car robbery. There's scenes from earlier. A white Dodge minivan was being pursued by Houston police and several other agencies, uh, basically along the entire west side of Houston, all the way from Sugar Land, uh, all the way into Harris County, up the west side freeway, the 8 freeway, uh, and then finally onto a series of surface streets. A lot of dangerous maneuvers preceded the end of this, or ju was occurred just before the end, uh, including uh, wrong turns down entranceways and uh, several attempts by police to throw out spike strips to disable this car. And finally, it ended right there uh, with a disabled motorist uh, who had uh, tried to get away but didn't. All right, let's move on to the other story. There may be a new lead in the spree of killings in Gaffney, South Carolina.